Origami is the ancient art of folding paper to create interesting shapes that can be used by NASA to do all sorts of crazy designs. Mm -hmm. A lot of use in mathematics. And our project is more focused on the mathematical principles of origami instead of the art, but how they relate to it. Okay. So the type of origami we're going to be focusing on today is called flat folding origami, which essentially means that after all the folds you do, it can be crimped down into one flat plane. So no matter how you fold it, you can take it, fold it, fold it again, fold it again, however you can imagine, and it'll all go down to one. So you can get things like this. That's what we're going to be focusing on. Something, an example of not like that would be like this, where you make crimps to give it three-dimensional shapes, to where if you were to crunch it, it wouldn't last. So we ruined it. Okay, one of the first four, four rules of, of flat fold origami is two colorability, which much like the four coloring mapping prob problem we had, in origami you could only have two colors. So if you were to take it and you were to paint all the sides on, of this plane and not paint any of the sides on this plane, like such, then all of them will not be colored here and will be silver on this side. So if we take it and open it up, we get a kind of a map that can only be used with a maximum of two colors. Now, if you can introduce a third color, it's going to break the origami rules. Okay, the second rule of flat folded origami is that surrounding a single vertex, the number of mountain and valley creases is going to differ by two. So, for example, this is a mountain crease because it makes a mountain. It comes up and like then, that. And then this is a valley crease. Which goes down. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And to show an example of mountain and valley creases, we have this here. So you can see we have one, two. This is around the tip. Yeah, the this is the surrounding of our text up here. Yeah. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six mountain creases. And we have four valley creases. One, one two, two, three, and four. Mm -hmm. So when it comes together at a point, they differ by See, it has six and four? Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. And then... This is true everywhere. Yeah. So if you every know, single vertex, it's yeah. going to differ by two. So over here... We have one, two, two three valley folds, and then, and then one, one mountain fold. Which differ by two. The rule of flat fold in origami is that every other angle is going to add to 180 degrees. So this is going to be our example here. So looking at a single vertex. So looking at this vertex here, if you add the silver angles, you're going to get 180 degrees. And if you add the red angles, you're going to get 180 degrees. So looking at a different vertex, like this vertex here, you can do the same thing, and you're going to add the silver and get 180, and then you'll add the red and get 180. Another rule is that a sheet can never penetrate a fold. Meaning, see how this right here is one continuous motion along a plane? If I was to fold this over here, then that suddenly couldn't be over here. It has to remain one continuous fold. Um, pretty simple. Okay, so here's a typical crane. Just an origami crane. Every piece of origami comes from a base. Now, we can start with a very simple base, like a kite base, which is literally just a fold, like so. And you can do all sorts of things from that. And you've got this traditional square base, you invert it for a water bomb base, it's just got four points like that. And you've got the frog base. Now from the frog base, if we fold it like that, you can actually see that that's kind of where we got the fish from. Um, cool. And then you've got the base where the crane came from, where you have four points here, and then one out here. And that's kind of where we got the crane. Okay, now each base can be calculated with graph theory. We can use that by looking at trees. We'll get into that a little bit further, but a base, going from base to model, takes a little bit of artistic know-how. That's, that's where we kind of leave math and enter into art for that. But getting a base, we can use mathematics, specifically graph theory. Alright, so let's revisit the kite base, just the most simple one. Now, if we look at this kite base, we can see that we have two vertexes, one out here and one here. 
Now if we open this up, these can be represent, represented as two circles. All right, now what these circles represent is that each time I fold it inwards, I can fold it again inwards, and it follows along that circle path. And the smaller I get, the more I'm approaching a limit that reaches a circle. So this, in other words, here we have a circle pattern this way and a circle pattern this way to where it creates. We're going to start talking about trees and how trees lead to bases in origami. So a quick review of trees. This is an example of a tree. And a tree is an acyclic connected graph. Every edge is going to be a bridge. And there is a unique path between every two vertices. Okay, so let's revisit our most basic one, which is the kite. Okay, the kite can be broken up into a tree that looks like this. So when we open it up, we can see our two circles. Now notice the inside of the circle represents the two vertexes, or the leaves. And this one is the branch. So that when it's folded up, from here over is one component from here to there. And this one is from here to there. So therefore, that's just a, a, a tree representation of the base that makes up the kite. Now we can make it a little bit more complicated. So basically, when you take the water bomb base, you look at it like that, you have the base here and the four leaves. Now when we open it up, notice that the, the base here is going to expand to four points, like so. So we have the four points here, and then we have the four leaves. Okay, and that basically makes up that tree right there. And what's cool about this, you can just see it. Okay, but notice that these two lines here correspond just to one circle, therefore they correspond just to one. Even a little bit further, and see this right here, these are smaller, and the size matters on the edges here, because they correspond to how big the circle should be. So here, we see we have a point in the center there, and that's going to represent that point there. But notice how when I open it up, that now corresponds to five points. This point, this point, this point, this point, and this point. And then you have the small circles that make that tree. So four little leaves, four points. Okay, And then it can get even a little more complicated, because we take that basic crane here, and we see we have one point that leads out to four. And notice we have one small one and four big ones. Well, here we're going to have, we're going to focus on this point right here, which is going to be represented as kind of a green black. Okay, that, that corresponds to all four sides there. But then when we open it up, as you can see in there, we're going to have four spots in the middle there that are the green. So then when we open it up and study this space, all the green represent that one there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight vertex that represent one point on the tree. And then we have the centers of the circles, which represent where the vertexes are. Okay, so those will collapse back together. So are all those greens in a two-dimensional land, or right where my thumb is. Now we've shown you examples of these three, but the number of trees is infinite. And so for this tree, we can get this base, and it'll look like this, and so on and so forth. You kind of start to get the idea of how we're making a tree. Um, some of them can be complicated how, how to fold. These ones are pretty easy to fold, but coming to this one can become very difficult to fold. Um, but for one more example here, we have the Pegasus. And the Pegasus base looks like this, and the computer program can do this. This is a tree generated from a computer program called Tree Maker. It was developed by a man named Robert Lang, and essentially, you plug in, you know, this tree, and it's going to spit out a crease pattern, such like this. That using this to fold a base like this, and then you can get the scorpion. So this crease pattern is generated to give you the scorpion here. So it's, you can kind of see how you have the, the legs of the scorpion and then you have the two pinchers up here and then it's face right there too. Alright guys, that's it for our presentation today. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something. 
Go download TreeMaker. It's a free program online made by Robert Lang. Mm -hmm. You can just create your own tree and it'll spit out some more trees back. Mm -hmm. Have fun. Thanks for coming.